Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I will be doing a spoiler free review of Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. So if you guys missed it, I recently uploaded a basic booktuber reads adult fantasy vlog and for that video one of the books that I read was Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. I wanted to make sure I did separate reviews for each of the books that I included in that vlog so that's why I'm here. I just wanted to sit down, delve more into my thoughts and my feelings about this first book in this 14 book series. This video as I mentioned at the very beginning will be spoiler free and I believe that this is going to be the only review of the Wheel of Time books that will be spoiler free just because it is the first book in a series so I feel like it's very easy for me to not have spoilers but again for the rest of the books if I do continue them will be spoiler filled. So first I'm going to attempt to give a synopsis for this huge epic adult fantasy. Our main character is Randall Thor. He is a farmer. He works with his father and they often trade, I believe it's like mead or alcohol, some sort of alcoholic substance to this nearby town. We open up the book during this eve of this celebration that this town looks forward to and all of a sudden these two strangers enter the town and of course in such a small town like the two rivers which is where they live it is very obvious when new people come to town especially ones that look like high lords one of them is this very high looking lady who we learn quickly is an Aes Sedai who are these very powerful women who are able to control this magic in this world and there's a lot of history behind them but basically they are just these very high High, powerful women who kind of rule the country basically they have this governmental body and there are a lot of superstitions about them that they are evil and manipulative and all of these things so of course everybody's a little on edge and the woman the Aes Sedai her name is Moraine she gets an interest in Rand and his two childhood friends Matt and Perrin because there is this prophecy slash rumor that this evil force is looking for for boys around their age because there is this prophecy that there is this dragon reborn. The dragon is this very all-powerful person, chosen one if you will, who is destined to defeat the all-powerful evil force. It's a classic chosen one trope. I'm sure you guys get the gist. So Matt Perrin, Rand, and a couple other women from their town, Egwene and Nynaeve, all go on a quest with Moraine and her kind of bodyguard guy named Land, and they are all going on a journey to the capital of the Aes Sedai in order to kind of hide the boys from this evil force. Woo! Hopefully that is a bit concise and shows you what the overall synopsis of the book is. It is very heavily Tolkien inspired, it is very heavily Lord of the Rings inspired. I personally have not read the books yet, I do want to in my lifetime, but I am an avid fan of the movies and I noticed a lot of the similarities. I caught on to a lot of the references. I have heard from people who love and have read Lord of the Rings that they both love it and they like the retelling aspect, they like the references to classic literature and classic fantasy, but I've also heard people who really love Lord of the Rings who think it's derivative and think it's a bit bland and boring and just a copycat of the story. So I'll let you guys be the determining factor for if you want to pick this up. If you are a Lord of the Rings, fan. I cannot say. I didn't mind it at all again because I've just seen the movies. I thought it was fun and it made it a bit easier to even get into the world and kind of understand the world because I could compare it to Tolkien's universe and I kind of had this visual picture already with kind of how the world looked. As far as the writing is concerned I was a bit nervous to pick up this book not only because it's daunting to pick up a 14 book series but also because I have heard pretty 
negative things about Robert Jordan's writing style. A key factor of the writing that people often talk about is how detail-oriented Robert Jordan is. He really likes to paint the picture of his world, which means he spends quite a lot of time describing the clothing, the appearance, the landscape, etc. of his world. And I thought that I was not going to enjoy this. I thought it was going to be a bit info dumpy. I was expecting it to be a bit jarring to get into, but I was pleasantly surprised in that it really was not. I did not find it info dumpy at all because info dumpy to me means giving you blocks of information inorganically and randomly and not flowing with the rest of the story. But I feel like each time he was explaining each aspect of his world, his magic, his cultures, all of those things, I felt like it was delivered, again, very organically. I felt like it flowed with the narrative and it didn't feel jarring or clunky while I was reading it. That, of course, could also be me being a little bit biased because world building is probably my favorite thing about fantasy, and so I was kind of eating up all of the information that he was giving me. So that could, of course, be a factor but that is something to note because I was definitely scared to pick up this book because of its age as well as all of the kind of negative aspects that I've heard people give to this book and its writing specifically. In addition to simply the writing style, I will go into the pacing. Now, Daniel Green, who is of course the epitome of the Wheel of Time stan account, he has mentioned that the story goes at a kind of sprint, walk, sprint, walk, pacing. Now, I feel like that is a perfect description of how Robert Jordan crafted his story. So we have quite slow build-up points, and then we have action scenes, slow build-up points, action scenes, etc. You guys understand what I'm saying. Now, I am one of those people who doesn't really care for action in my stories. I'm just always very bored with, like, the battle scenes and the running from the enemy, which I know sounds kind of contradictory and doesn't make much sense. That's just me as a reader. I care for more world building, magic systems, character development than I do action scenes and battle scenes. However, although I am not crazy about how much action and adventure scenes we got, I can't appreciate why it was structured that way. In addition to the pacing, there is also a point where our group is split up. If you consider that a spoiler, I apologize. I'm just trying to be as vague, but also explain the book as best to my ability. So because our group is split up, we get kind of different perspectives throughout the reading portion. So we'll follow two characters and then we'll switch to another group of characters and then another group of characters, which made the book feel very episodic paired with the sprint walk pacing of the story. So I feel like that was extremely smart of Robert Jordan to do this because if you were with a particular group and they were going through kind of a sludge period, you then switch to a different perspective and you got a change of scenery and tone and atmosphere that still kept you engaged through the reading process, which I can say happened with me. I don't feel like there were many points of this story where I was bored. And if there were a couple points, it didn't last very long because of how Robert Jordan structured his story, both with pacing and different perspectives that we follow. So I definitely commend him for that. And I can safely say that this 600 page epic adult fantasy really did not feel like 600 pages. And for that to happen, I definitely feel like that deserves to be acknowledged and praised. So overall, I feel like he crafted a very well-developed adventure story in this first novel. Now, going into the characters, my favorite character in this book and the one that is the driving force for me continuing this series is absolutely Moraine. 
She is incredibly fascinating and I know we haven't even gotten a taste of her potential, her power, her character arc. I am so excited to just see Moraine be a bad bitch and I know that Robert Jordan is going to deliver that to me. I don't know, I just trust him to make Moraine a badass character and I'm so ready to just see her conquer the world. I just want her to show these bitches what's up because the a few times that she used her power it was so unbelievably epic that I wanted more and I could tell that those tastes of her power were given sparingly because otherwise she would just be able to destroy the world and she would just win and the book would be 200 pages and that's it. So I'm very excited to see how her character develops. I'm very excited to see more of her power. She's a bad bitch. I love her. We love her. We stand. We appreciate her and I'm so ready to just see her and love her and appreciate her. So there you go. I also really liked Lyle or Lorelai or I do not remember his name but he is our orc-esque character and he is just the most wholesome sweetest bookworm character. He just cares about preserving knowledge and history and he is constantly apologizing because he is always making kind of insensitive remarks about how quickly mortals die and it was just so cute and so wholesome and I really loved him and I loved his addition to the group dynamic. I also really did enjoy Egwene as a character and I may make some people mad in saying this but she is a lesbian and I don't know what to tell you otherwise. I personally will not be reading anything to negate this headcanon that I have placed in my brain because Egwene loves women and that's all I have to say about her character because that's factual and I feel like I am entitled to place that headcanon onto her. The amount of times that she just criticizes Perrin, Rand, and Matt for being idiots and just criticizing the male sex gender as a whole was incredible and beautiful to witness. And I personally feel like in a series written in the 90s that does not take into account sexuality to the scope that we do in 2020, I think it's appropriate for me to be able to have this headcanon that she is a lesbian. And so just let me have this one thing, okay? Just let me have it. I would appreciate it. I am just very curious to see her development into her power and her growth with her power and magic. I think the process of becoming an Aes Sedai is very interesting and I feel like that is going to be shown through Egwene's character. So I'm very curious to see what happens with her and how she grows from here. Now aside from my very valid headcanon about her, I will say that it is quite obvious that Egwene and Perrin are likely going to be a couple and I can't say I'm mad at it but she's a lesbian. Okay, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Let's move on. Perrin. I did not like him throughout the first half of the book. I gotta be honest, he just gave me weird dude bro vibes that I wasn't vibing with and so wasn't a fan of him until we learned more about what he was and when he came into contact with an additional character. I am very much more interested in what he is going to bring to the series. I'm very interested in his whole ordeal. So I mean at least he's interesting which I can't say for other characters in this story. Speaking of the most bland characters ever. Lan? All I'm gonna say is I don't know who he is, why he was here. He contributed absolutely nothing to the story and I really just have nothing to say about him because it doesn't feel like he was even there to begin with. So moving on. Nynaeve, I will say I was not a huge fan of her but I feel like that's for a reason because she was very obviously antagonistic throughout the entire story and so I'm not going to chalk that up to her personality per se. I think that's just the wall in which she built in this first book. I'm sure we're going to get more of her character and I will appreciate her character more as we go through. It is impossible for me to talk about her character without referencing the fuckery that happened with her and another character that just came out of 
nowhere. And it was actually really sad to see because the trigger or the interaction between these two characters that, again, came out of nowhere was actually quite heart-wrenching and quite sad. And I just could not appreciate it to the extent that I wanted to because, again, it came out of nowhere. I don't know where Robert Jordan had that in his mind. In fact, I thought this character and a different character were going to have romantic relations between each other. So again, came out of left field and I have no idea what went through his mind when writing that scene because it wasn't through my reading experience, that's for sure. Matt was he was okay. I mean, he was going through a descent into madness throughout this whole book, so we didn't really get his true character for the majority of the story, so I can't really say much about him. And finally, our main character, Rand, kind of similarly to Lan and how I feel about him, though not to that extent because, of course, Rand is technically our main character, and so we did get more of him. He did contribute more to the story, but I feel like I just don't have a ton of his character, his personality to go off of. I am sure he's going to grow immensely. I'm sure he's going to go through much character development. And I'm sure I'm going to have and develop more strong feelings towards him as the series goes on. But for this first book, I mean, he was fine. He was just kind of basic. And I again, don't really have much to say about his character. Lastly, I think I just want to share a bit of my thoughts about this story as a whole. First, I really wish we got more of the magic system in this book. I do not understand it at all besides the bare minimum of the kind of gender roles and the overall history of what the magic did to this world. But I could not tell you specifics about it. And especially after that ending, my mind is blank. No brain cells were found. I don't know what happened. And I have been told through various like Reddit posts that I've read and various conversations that I've had that that is okay and that's kind of to be expected and you're not necessarily supposed to know what happened. But I don't like that. I don't like that experience as a reader. I like to know what happened. Like, you can hold back things from me, that's totally fine, but I want to at least know the structural things of what I just read. And after that ending, I just, I have no idea what happened. Now, maybe that is because I don't have the intellect for it, but also I just think that Robert Jordan is, again, holding so much of his magic and his world back from the readers to learn about throughout the series, which I, I mean, I understand, don't get me wrong, I get it, it's a 14 book series, you can't know everything in the first book, but I just wish we knew a little more so I could have more concise discussions about it. I will also say that, again, picking back off of that last point, I just don't feel like I can fully appreciate this book for what it is because so much is left out. Because, again, how many times am I going to say this? It's the first book in a 14 book series. Obviously, Robert Jordan had a ton he needed to say about this world and these characters. Characters. So it is impossible for readers to even know a sliver of what he has planned for these characters in this first book. So simply because of that, I could not enjoy this book as much as people who are long fans of this series and know exactly how it plays out. Coming from an outsider's perspective and someone who is starting this series for the first time, I feel like I am as blind finishing this book than I was just watching Daniel Crane's videos on it. So simply for that reason, I had to give this book a 3, 3.5 rating. I I could not give it any higher than that because although I was immersed and entertained throughout this entire reading experience, I do not feel like I have a good and strong enough grasp in this book as a first book in a series to give it a higher rating than that. So it's really difficult because Again, during my reading experience, I had a really fun time with the story, but towards the end and looking at the book as a singular story in a singular book, I just feel like I don't have enough 
to fully appreciate it. So those are kind of my final thoughts. I definitely will be continuing with the series. I am going to be reading at least the first four books in this series. If by the fourth book I don't feel like I want to continue with the series, I will not after that, but I have heard from multiple people that the fourth book is really where the Wheel of Time starts. So I personally will be reading up until that point. So hopefully you guys join me in this experience as I start the Wheel of Time series and I review them. Definitely let me know any and all thoughts on the series, if you have read them, if you are a long fan of the series, if you are interested in picking it up, if you aren't interested in picking it up, please let me know down below any and all thoughts in the comments. I really want to have a discussion about this book. This series has a very large community and I definitely want to conversate with that community and it is probably one of the most exciting things about starting this series for me. So I really hope you guys comment. I really hope you guys give me all of your thoughts but that is going to do it for this review. If you want to pick up this book for yourself, I will have my Amazon affiliate link down below. Definitely go check it out. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It just supports me in this channel. If you do want to support me in other ways, I have my Amazon wish list, my coffee, as well as my address for you to send me books for review or anything of that nature. All of the info is down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!